Once again, the gardening has begun. The gods are back on Earth. They have returned. Woo, spooky gods. I'm Alex. I'm the god of taking a long break from my job of making this <laughs> show, and I've returned to do it. I'm Justin. I'm Pete. And you are listening to American Godcast, an American Gods podcast that has been on hiatus for a very long time, as the show has been away for a very long time, uh, while a bunch of behind-the-scenes stuff happened. We'll get into that in a moment. Uh, but first, we're going to recap what happened on the first season of American Gods, because yeah, at this point... Yeah, recapping. What, what is it, a year and a half, two years, so something long. like that? So long. Very long time. And at a time uh, when the show, some shows come back, like, in the same year, this is crazy. It uh-huh. feels crazy. Yes. Uh, so I actually had to go back and read through the whole wiki just to be edited. As I was doing that, I was like, oh, right. Oh, yeah, that happened. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, it's weird. Uh, for those of you who listened to the podcast before, I've read the book. Justin, you're kind of our Gay- Neil Gaiman scholar. That's right. So to speak. Mm-hmm. And I was he, at the Neil Gaiman Institute all last year. <laughs> How was that, by the way? It was good. I took a lot of classes. It's a shame he didn't show up, so that was a bummer. Um, yeah. But uh, a lot, I was the only one there. Um, but it was good. Great. Cool, 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 cool. And uh, Pete, now at this point, have you read some of the American Gods comic books? Is that correct? Or you've skipped it entirely? Skipped it. <laughs> great. Great. <laughs> Okay, very cool, very you, cool. You could uh, do a great refresher of last season for us, though, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, break <laughs> it down, Pete. What happened on last season? All right, so a lot of fucked up shit happened. Uh, <laughs> Easter, a lot of Jesuses, an amazing and powerful speech about slavery, uh, and yeah. this girl really fucked over this dude. <laughs> Jesus, I forgot about that. That really uh, made me mad. Great. Okay, so actually, here's what happened. Uh, There is a guy named Shadow Moon. He was in prison. While he was in prison, his wife, Laura, died. Uh, Very sad. He got out of prison. On the way back, he met a guy named Mr. Wednesday, who offered him a job as a bodyguard. He didn't quite take it at first. Uh, He visited Laura. Over the course of many convoluted things that happened, uh, he got a magic coin that he threw on her grave, which resurrected her. It was a magic coin from a leprechaun. Uh, What was the leprechaun's name again? Uh, Mad Sweeney. Mad Sweeney, the leprechaun. Uh, And he ended up taking the job with Mr. Wednesday. Cut ahead a couple of episodes. Turns out Mr. Wednesday is actually Odin. And what he's doing is, for reasons we still don't know, needs Shadow Moon to help him in his war between the old gods and the new gods. Uh, The other thing that we've learned over the course of the first season is that there are many different iterations of gods. Basically, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but it feels like the way the show is positing it, at least, is belief creates gods, fuels gods, but can also create multiple versions. And we found that uh, Pete uh, so lovingly teased that there are multiple Jesuses, we learned, there was a Mexican Jesus who got gunned down at the border. Oh, Meanwhile, man, there's right. American Jesus who we met at the end of the season at Easter's house. Uh, and even Easter herself is the God of spring. Um, but there perhaps are multiple versions of her as well. So yeah. we also met Anansi, the trickster God oh. who presumably is great, uh, but presumably exists back in Africa while still also being brought on slave ships over to America at the same time. So while all this is going on in the war, you have uh, Wednesday trying to be the leader of the new gods, potentially bringing together the new gods and the, being the leader of the old gods, potentially bringing together the old gods and the new gods. We're not quite sure about that. On the new gods side, at least in season one, and I'm being a little bit of a caveat here because it's going to change yeah. dramatically in season two, uh, there was media played by Jillian Anderson. Uh, There was a technical boy. uh, And there's Mr. World, the god of globalization. Now, uh, one detail that you probably shouldn't forget that I definitely forgot until I looked over it again is that Mr. Wednesday and uh, Mr. World made a deal. They're actually seemingly at this point working together. So how that's going to play out in season two, we'll have to see. Well, we have Uh, Mr. World has a different iteration in Florida called Mr. Worldwide. Yes, it does. Dale. Dale? Yeah. Is Dale? I, think that, I don't think Dolly? it's Dale. It's definitely not Dale. Dale. 
Chip. Da- and then there was, it was like, I think it's the uh, God. Rescue Jin. Rangers? Dale. Is it Rescue it's Rangers? Da- yeah. yeah. Dale. <laughs> uh, yes, there's also, uh, on the side, this is something that got really blown out from the book. It was just a story in the book. And uh, each episode of the show, we got a different story about a god. Uh, on the show, one of those stories about a djinn, a genie, um, hooked up with a guy named Salim, who is a taxi driver. And that got weaved into the main story where Salim has met up with Mad Sweeney and Laura is driving across the country because he's looking for his true love, this djinn. And they're all starting to come together at a place called the House of the Rock, which, mild spoilers, but we're getting at it to do, this is a big place of power for the gods, as we're going to find out in season two. So uh, I think actually the cliffhanger of the season was Laura finally reunited with Shadow moon and said we need to talk if i remember correctly i think that's right yeah and also wasn't a cliffhanger the fact that like easter just like destroyed you know like spring and like everything died it was all right yeah that that happened too <laughs> that's kind yeah, of it was bad for she, the world yeah. yeah mr worldwide as well yeah everybody yeah, suffers. He, yes he uh i believe if i remember correctly there was a pitbull concert and it was in the middle of a cornfield, and the cornfield just like turned brown, and he was like, "Dale." Yeah, yeah, that's definitely his music does that. Yeah, it's the great withering force of uh, <laughs> of pop music. Uh, anything else we missed from season one? We should talk about. <clears throat> I mean, that was a great recap, especially for a show that Thank is a, a little bit dusty in the old memory banks. If 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 I may, though, uh, I think it's important to reiterate. That Shadow's girlfriend was cheating on him, and oh when she God. died, she was sucking a dude's dick that got bit <laughs> off. <laughs> Why is that so important? Because in in life she was an asshole, but in death she might be a better person, and that's what I'm hoping for. Oh yeah, um, okay, all right. That took a turn. I, you seem to be focusing on the dick biting <laughs> off a yeah. lot more than the redemption arc that she's been on. I don't know what you're talking about. I was clearly laying out my thoughts. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> you definitely did that. And for such sure. great imagery. Yes. Uh, yeah, Laura is definitely going on a redemption arc. We don't know necessarily the place she has to play in Shadow Moon's life yet, but clearly they have a lot that they need to hash out. There's also a lot that Shadow needs to figure out about himself. There's a point in the first season where uh, they're in Chicago, I believe, and uh, Mr. Wednesday wants to rob a bank. Not yeah, exactly rob a bank, but rob a bank. Uh, right. yeah. And in order to do it, he asked Shadow Moon to think about snow, and it actually starts to snow. So what exactly is going on there, whether Shadow Moon has powers? For those of us who have read the book, we do know what's going on there. Mm. Uh, but for those watching the show, it's not totally clear yet. Um, well, oh, yeah, also, please, Pete. Uh, Shadow Moon has to figure out if he fully trusts, uh, you know, Wednesday, because it seems like you know, Wednesday's just using him as a pawn and he's got to kind of catch up to what the real agenda is. Well, one thing, one other big thing that happened in the season finale is all season long, even though Shadow Moon had seen all of these fantastic things happen, he was very doubtful about the existence of gods. In the season finale, he decided, yep, okay, I think it's fair to say gods exist, particularly after what Easter did causing a drought all of Mr. Worldwide. Yeah, exactly. I mean, one of the big things that I I feel like the first season set up that was different from the books and is sort of a little bit unresolved as far as like how the world works. You touched on it, like the different call each new culture has a different interpretation of the, of the new God because in the original, in the book, it was like old gods, new gods, pretty clear delineation. And now with this new iteration, it sort of fudges the line a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think there's a case to be made that maybe the new gods are just, you know, iterations of the old gods when before it was a very clear line between them. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see if it plays out like that. Like if Mr. Wednesday, if Mr. World is an iteration of Mr. Wednesday or something like that. Uh, uh, To your point, I think that's entirely possible 
if that happens. So let's talk about season two. Going into season two, part of the reason it seemed to take so long is there was a lot of behind the scenes turmoil. There's been a lot of reporting and a lot of questions about exactly what happened. Uh, Certainly the people who are currently on board have pushed back and said, no, everything's hunky dory. It's fine. But they do have all eight episodes of the can. So it's happening. It's going to be on air regardless of what actually happened. Yeah. March 10th, it kicks off on stars. Uh, But Brian Fuller and Michael Green, who are the prime creative forces behind the show for season one, they left reportedly. They wrote multiple scripts and then those scripts were scrapped. Uh, It's unclear whether that was for budget reasons or what happened. Um, But because they left Gillian Anderson, who played media, who was so fantastic, left the show. He was. Kristen Chenoweth, who played Easter, also not coming back. Uh, So that, yeah, so that uh, certainly throws a little crink in things, uh, but they're adjusting accordingly. There's new actors coming on board. Instead of media, we've got new media, who's going to be playing some more current things. We love new media. Love new media. I can't wait wait to meet podcast. (laughs) Our God, the God that that we worship. That God (laughs) sucks. The god of uh, mattress endorsements. Yeah. The uh, god of, yeah. Uh, but, is this, can you hear me? Uh, is this, am I coming through? Yeah. Uh, uh, how, how's my mic? How's yeah. my mic? Uh, hey guys, uh, support us on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> too, too sad. Patreon. Too sad to put. Yeah. Too yeah. real. Too real. Uh, so there is the behind the scenes turmoil. Also, there were a lot of rumors that uh, even though Neil Gaiman came in and has co-writing credit on the first one and was supposed to be very hands-on, he seems to have a lot of other responsibilities right now. He has Good Omens is happening over on Prime Video, which is very exciting. It was just announced that he's going to be rebooting the Storyteller with the Jim Henson Company. Yeah. So he has a lot of other stuff going on. Uh, And it seems in the absence of him, uh, Jesse Alexander, I believe, is the new showrunner. But the the rumor was a lot of those scripts were not great. And Orlando Jones, who's one of the cast members, uh, came in and on the sly rewrote a bunch of the scripts. Not on the slide, but on on the side was like, these aren't up to stuff and rewrote a bunch of them uh, himself as they were filming on set. So that's the rumors behind the scenes. That's a crazy that doesn't happen. An actor's like, you know what? Let me take a crack at it. Yeah. But he's super smart and he's a good writer. And I mean, listen, I hope that didn't happen. I hope everything was smooth behind the scenes, but I kind of believe the reporting and I believe that he certainly could come in and feel that responsibility to make the show work the right way. The crazier thing to me is uh, American Gods is a highly special effects driven show. Yeah. Like it's highly technical. The look of it is very precise. So that's not like, it's not like you're doing an FX sad cob or something where it's like, yeah, let's figure it out on set. Like there's a lot of pre visualization stuff you have to do. And to me, that's the crazy part. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't like, I'll just redo that. Orlando Jones is going to come in and be like, Oh, let me just redraw this dragon. Like that's not (laughs) right. How it works. Yeah. Well, that all said, that behind the scenes stuff out of the way, what are you looking forward to? What do you want to see in season two? Well, I would first like to say season one was amaze balls. It was highly entertaining. Zelvin, can you stop drinking vodka for like five <laughs> seconds? Jesus, I, guy. I'm so scared about what's going to happen in American God season two. Uh, I got to get drunk. Uh, yeah. For those of you listening to the audio podcast, by the way, we're going to have a video version of this up on our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash comic book club, uh, where you can see me chug a whole thing of vodka from yeah. a man, Mr. Worldwide. Yeah. Ooh. It's nonstop party on the this. Vis- talk about visualization. Zelvin, put your fingers down, man. That looks weird. Right. Previous. Uh, that's As two I was W's. Saying, though, season one was one of, one, amazing. Uh, no, can I specify? Uh, it's two W's. Uh, one of them is for winning, and the other one is for worldwide. <laughs> oh my god, that's so crazy! Thank you for spe- the coolest people specify their hand gestures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Way to throw the shocker up, and then Jesus. Uh, uh, so two of the pig. What? For let's Mr. never. Worldwide. No, that's no. Let's, <laughs> let's not. No, please. no, no. For the pink outfit that I like to wear to pitbull concerts. Sure, 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 sure. So season <laughs> one was so amazing. I'm really worried about there being a big. Difference. Sorry, I don't want to stay too much on this, but we should mention that Dane Cook actually was in the first season of American Gods. That's true. Uh, he was the guy who got his dick bit off. 
Yeah. Very fitting. So, uh, he had a, very, oh, a, a too orgasmic performance. <laughs> I'm just worried about season two being so drastically different from season one that it doesn't look or feel like the same show. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a very real concern. And I think uh, hopefully they'll be able to maintain the look, but truly, like, the entire uh, big part of the creative driving force of the show is totally different. So things yeah. are going to be different. Yeah, I I agree with you. I think they've the, – I don't know. It, it's tough because I think about, like, Hannibal, where that was Brian Fuller and Michael Green behind the scenes for all three seasons of the show, and it was so clearly a visually driven show. But to your point, Justin, the scripts would just not have been the same if they weren't keeping careful watch on it the entire time. Yeah. Um, I think we will see it look the same. I think they know, stars knows they need to keep it visually the same. They need to make it feel visually consistent. But will it be as deep? Uh, we, I don't know. We had, I felt like, not to give ourselves too much credit, but I felt like we had some pretty deep conversations about religion that were driven yeah. by the show yeah. over the course of the first season of the podcast. And I'm hoping the same thing happens in season two, it's nice to think about that. And it's nice to think about the impact religion has on your life and gods have on your life or not. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. And it's a show where each episode sort of stood alone and had a lot of different takes on, um, on religion that you're talking about. And it'd be easy to see the show fall into just like a plot driven show that wasn't as thoughtful about the content. Also, I mean, yes, religion, but also life, love. I mean, they tackled a lot of big subjects and uh, and history. It was really amazing the way this all kind of weaved in an entertaining show. Yeah, I'm also interested to touch on maybe spoilers, but getting into what happens in the book a little bit at this point. The House on the Rock is a big event, and certainly that seems like that'll be a big episode to kick things off. But we're also entering into, depending on how closely they follow the book, uh, a quieter uh, series of episodes, potentially, for what happens. Um, this is very much skirting spoilers. I'm not going to skirt it, uh, mention exactly what happens for anybody who hasn't read the book. But for a good chunk of the book following this, Shadow Moon heads off on herself by herself, interacts with a new cast, and goes on very different adventures isn't exactly the right word, but it becomes a very different sort of story uh, with a very different sort of direction and feel. And I'm curious to see, given how much they built up the supporting cast in uh, towards the end of season one, whether they will fully head in that direction or if they'll balance what is about to potentially happen with Shadow with other stories. Justin, do you re remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, and I think it's an important part of the book where he... He gets in with the new gods more. Like he has to. Yeah, definitely an important part of the book. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. Thanks for backing me up. My my reading hype man, Pete LePage. Uh, so I, I yeah, I can see where it might be a little quieter, but the way, but also the way the way they've done the first season, it feels like they could sort of mash things up a little bit and and then deviate from the book a little bit and have it be like yeah. big set pieces. Well, and I believe, I don't know what happened to the plan now that uh, Fuller and Green are gone, but the plan was to make it a three-season show. So yeah. they do, uh, there is a significant chunk of the book left. I could see where potentially they could be going in the third season. Um, there is stretching that needs to happen. I mean, there's stretching yeah. that happened in the first season, certainly they needed to flesh out that whole chunk and they mix things that happened later and earlier. The Mr. Wednesday reveal, if I remember correctly, does not happen until the end of the book, right? Mm, I don't know. I think it's a little earlier. Is it? Yeah. Man, definitely not the end. end. I think it's the second okay. to last chapter. <laughs> Jesus, Peter. Oh, great guess, Peter. Remember, yeah. do, you, do you remember last season, Pete? It took uh, you a while to figure it out. Right. Oh, until yeah, it, definitely. Until it happened on screen. Yeah. Uh, I'm well, slow. <laughs> there are other reveals that have happened. Uh, one interesting thing, I think, is there's a character that hasn't really shown up on the show at all that is super important to the book, um, who is in prison with Shadow Moon at the beginning. I'm curious to see when they loop back to this character and whether we get the same sort of slightly early reveal 
that we get uh, a big, very vague. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, can I ask you a question? Yeah. You've seen the trailer for season two, right? Yeah. Did you see that person in that? Uh, no, I don't think so. The trailer Damn for. It. Sorry. Wait, who are you thinking of, Pete? I don't know. You were saying they, if you saw them in season one, like first up, maybe you saw Here's them. Here's what I'd the- say. There, there is a character who is related to Mr. Wednesday, related to Odin, that shows up. It's a big surprise in the book, unless you really think about it hard. But certainly when I was reading the book, I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. But you don't pick up on it. It's a trickier thing to do visually, I think, on the show. So I'm curious to see how they'll handle it. That was good and vague, right? (laughs) I think that was perfectly vague. (laughs) I'm going to guess Poseidon. (laughs) Uh, Nice. Yep. Yep, and it, it's it's easy to spot him because he's holding that giant uh, uh, trident. Trident, yes, yeah. yeah. But on the show, he's chewing trident gum. Ah, that's why you don't really pick up on that's it. Smart, it's great pretty branding. Cool. To that point, though, what other gods would you want to see in season two of American Gods? Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> I I will say, I hadn't thought about this before, but it would be really interesting to see them deal with uh, superheroes on the show. Just because those are our modern gods, that is our modern mythos. I don't know if they'd go that route, but it would be kind of fascinating. Yeah, Uh, because I'm sure that my Aquaman is different than Pete's Aquaman. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Pete's Aquaman is just the movie. Right, and your your Aquaman is Waterhead Aquaman, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. Actually, no, it's, it's uh, Golden Hook Hand. Yeah. No one my likes Aqu- Water Hand. Yeah, my Aquaman is Justin Hartley Aquaman from the pilot that they never ran on the WB. Wow. Wow. Deep breath. Yeah. yeah. Deep cut. Deep, my deep My Aquaman cut. is Entourage Season 2. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian Grenier? Yeah. Aquaman? I yeah. think they'll work in all of them, honestly. Yeah, definitely. That's where, that's where the show's going to go. Cool. Well, here's where we're going to go. We're going to be running this podcast in the American Godcast feed on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, basically anywhere that you can find podcasts. Uh, We're going to put up this first episode in all of our podcast feeds just so you guys know an alert about it, Uh, but we'll take it down later so it doesn't become annoying. Uh, But again, if you want to subscribe to this podcast. We'll put these up after each episode airs Sunday nights on stars starting March 10th. Um, but yeah, subscribe there very specifically to get the podcast. Uh, also, I don't know if we'll have a dedicated Twitter feed necessarily to this. So follow, you can follow at comic book live. And if you want to support us, patreon.com slash comic book club. We also do a live show every Tuesday night at 8 PM at the people's improv theater loft in New York. Totally free. Come on by. We'll chat about American Gods or whatever else you want. Anything else we should plug, guys? No. Keep worshiping. Keep. (laughs) There you go. Keep worshiping, and we'll see you when American Gods returns. 